Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer, fresh off a red eye, Dave. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what the heck you're doing either. Well, this is this and that. We are going to be discussing everything going on in skating this week. John, if you're new here, please subscribe below because Jonathan took a red eye to do the show coming- For the sole purpose of seeing you, Dave. <laughs> well, what goes on? You were performing, talk about, you know, what- you Yeah, I was in um, San Francisco and we were doing a production of Tchaikovsky's Peak Dom, The Queen of Spades. And so I was singing performances of that and teaching at the conservatory at the same time, so. Did you do any- sightseeing in San Francisco, like, do you get like slightly touristy? Because that's one of the places I would like to nerd out and be touristy in. Ah, interesting. So I've been there like several times. So I feel like in the earlier trips, like I did more of the like stuff you're supposed to do. Okay. Um, it was also a lot of the performances were in Palo Alto, which I'd never been to. And it was like, Denver. yes stunning. like all these yes. like roses. And like, I was just there for like all of the, mm. I don't know what the word is the flora and the fauna, if you will. It was- Did you like want to like go to Brian Boitano's rink and skate? Like I have a very specific- Everyone like, brings up Brian Boitano there. Every single person. Is. When they know there's something about skating, that is their go-to. He is like king of all things San Francisco pop. So that is the most gorgeous rink with the glass window. Like, I think it's iconic, right? Oh. Uh, also, I like ever since, I was a teen, yeah, I was about 19, 18, 19. And I read Tales of the City for the first time and watched the Laura Linney <laughs> PBS version that is now on Netflix, the original. I've, you know, wanted to have a Tales of the City moment. So uh, that's, yeah, the whole, <laughs> so yeah. Amazing. Anyway, like some people are into Full House, other people want to see Barbary Lane. You know, yeah. that- which, sure. which version are you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got so, it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the well, Mario Kart. Speaking person. of people from Northern California, Paulina Edmonds interviewed Ilya Malinin uh, this week. And, you know, some people thought the interview was fascinating. I thought a lot of it was expected, but we did yeah. get a couple of nuggets. What stuck out to you? Well, I thought it was interesting. Again, like you say, there's there's only so many questions you can ask him at this point, And there's so many answers about not making the team, about doing the quad axle, all this sort of stuff. I thought it was interesting when he said it kind of worked out for him that they rescheduled Junior Worlds because he felt that training Junior Worlds before Senior Worlds would have been more difficult than it ended up being in the reverse, um, which is not something I had really thought about because we know, obviously, there are the differences in the time um, and the inclusion of quads in the short for the seniors. Um, so it was interesting to get his take that he kind of liked doing that approach and then sort of segueing to the, the junior format afterwards. It wound up, I think it will wind up being positive for him because on one hand, he got to rebound after a disappointing right. free skate at Worlds when there was so much buzz on him. Mm -hmm. Somewhat self-imposed, somewhat not. Uh, yeah. He has certainly not did anything to dispel uh, the hype around him. In fact, he said he wants to be the topic of conversation, which- we... That that motivates, yeah. Yes. For some, it would be like, don't, just let me quietly get ready and do it. But he, it, it energizes him, which was interesting. I don't find him as cocky as he might seem to others. You know, he's, he's got the quad god thing and he's, he, you know, said his thing like, well, why wouldn't I go to the Olympics? But even in these sorts of moments, he was like, I get why I could have. and. I I get why I did. So I think he's a combination of Russian honesty, which is different than American uh, fake humility, where mm -hmm. we know how to lie. Like we're going on a job interview and you know how to lie. <laughs> uh, what are your weaknesses? I try too hard. <laughs> yeah. Try too hard. yeah, right. <laughs> and, and I think culturally it's really strange when we see someone be honest. He does have an eight, 17, 18 year old kind of- uh, Swagger. Yeah, Spagger, but I'm sure that any athlete who's doing those jumps is going to have that element of swagger. It's yeah. just who we allow to have that kind of swagger. Do the titles have to come first? How does it have to happen? In this case, the jumps have been landed under pressure and done. So his swagger is coming, although there is I have a sense that he has to win the same way I think he had to win Junior Worlds, especially after right. messing up at in the free at Senior Worlds. Had he not won Junior Worlds, 
we would have started to get the Sasha Cohen. He's talented, but an, but yeah, can't close the yeah. deal internationally right. narrative, especially after he wasn't as successful in the Junior Grand Prix uh, in terms of landing all of the jumps, and that was one of the reasons, excuses for him not going uh, to the Olympics or not being set up to get the score to go to the Olympics, right? Uh, I imagine Ilya needs to win some Grand Prix events. Yeah. Yeah. And Although, I think could. I think could. Could. Also has the pressure of landing all of those quads, attempting all of those quads. It's talking about a seven quad layout, including a quad axle. You know, doesn't want to do a quad toe, quad toe, because then he can't. Um, That's silly. <laughs> that silly camera repeat all the different spots and you're like thinking about what he's talking about it's yes it logically makes sense it is just mind blowing to wrap your mind around yeah what he is saying and well there I mean, no, there's that part of me and i know they have to do this at this level i understand it's how they have to do it but when he's talking about like putting on the music and just picking where jumps go exclusively <laughs> and like just like not worrying about any of the in between i was like right but that is sort of the criticism <laughs> is it not so like maybe you could also go in another way but i understand it's a limitation of the way it's set up right now for him to yeah say. when you create any program though you do have to pick where the jumps go in the music. Like that is yeah. part of the thought process of having a skeleton backbone when you put the program together. Unless you're doing like some Lombiel art piece, like we saw at Fantasy and Ice or something like that. Two of them. <laughs> in a competitive program, you do have to plan. Of course, playoffs. but I guess what was yeah. missing Mm -hmm. from me, yeah. artsy fartsy guy, is mm -hmm. that sort of Sander Basic, like, hold on, hold on, first, what is it going to say? Like, what's the statement of your season? You want to work on your, you know, you want to bring up the PCS mark. So what's our angle? What's our hook with the music? You know, even like when she always said that about Tara, she was like, our hook is going to be sophisticated, age appropriate. You know, Do you so know what I think I, the hook is for him. It's the same hook as Nathan Chen. Cool. Cool lands the quads under pressure with some performance quality nathan i think had more of it especially with a performance background right Ilya has the swagger in other ways from doing these jumps not a carbon copy of nathan though there are many fans that have gone from nathan to Ilya as almost a replacement uh i think Ilya's going to it's kind of the Tom Z uh, school of thinking. Land the jumps, build the reputation, and the components will rise. Uh, Which has proven to work. But like you're saying, people that always said that about Nathan's skating, Nathan did start as a very expressive skater. There was a great deal of expression within the skating. It just sort of had to take a back seat, seemingly, as they, they revved up. I the also content. find, especially for um, the types of skaters who are skating while heterosexual, when they go through that young teenage age where they go from being a boy to being in, in the in-between, oh, especially if they're not very artistic, there's that weird, awkward phase as they're growing. There is, what's the angle? Yeah, like I mean, how do we sell this? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think you see it with a lot of skaters that where they almost become more shy about wanting to be too expressive. And I think Nathan talked about that in an interview where he got himself in all sorts of trouble. Uh, but I think that's a very real part of- Like an apology for being big in the performance almost, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think he worded it poorly. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I do think that that's a real thing. I think Ilya is now coming out of that age where now you have to perform. Right. And now it's, cooler to perform. So I do think we'll see that cool kind of yeah. swag. Well, and I'll forever remember what you said about Megan and Eric at Boston Worlds. When you, when you described their programs as being so athletically strong that there became something artistic about it. Like there was an energy of big elements just being nailed that suddenly was a version of interpretation. Um, and, and I think he, he could stand to do that. It'll be interesting to see him. I did think it was interesting that he wants the buzz. He likes the buzz for right now. I thought that was, I mean, certainly his actions do uh, indicate that. 
And there's always been this buzz from people that have been in this area is that the mother is a really strong personality, like really <laughs> tough. <laughs> and he doesn't let her go to competitions with him. Yeah. And he pointed out, oh, well, my mom was real, real pissed about the Olympics. And I'm like, yeah. this mother and his chutzpah and bravado are going to be such a gift to us, Jonathan, because oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to be a lack of material to talk about. Yeah. When we got, when we come and meet up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have this friend, Valeria Mazarski, who's from Chicago and a strong Russian woman. Right. Okay. And she was at the PSA with Julia Lautova, another strong Russian mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very well. And I was like, oh, well, you got to get a picture. They always send me a picture when they're together. Well, okay. Olga of the Letovs and Tatiana Molina, they all posed for that picture that I put on Instagram. It's like these very strong, very loud, very aggressive, you know, the kind of in the rink that are just like, arms! Alpha. Bend your knee, yeah. arms! Yeah, 100%. Tatiana is holding a sign that says, the joy of coaching. Which is exactly what I think when I hear a Russian woman coaching in the rink, being like, arts! Yeah, it's amazing. It's just joyous. Joyous. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that kind of aggression. <laughs> amazing. I don't think people, like, maybe understood the sarcasm in that post unless they knew the women. But there was, it was. Yeah. Really Got it. Got yeah. it. And again, as a skater, I cannot imagine being yelled at arms and then suddenly becoming light and lilty and lyrical <laughs> i tried to ask someone like why do all former soviet women have one volume they come to someone said it was because they're from the from in surmise well they're from a group lesson system it's the only way anyone could hear the code to be heard yeah they all need little mics they're yeah. just modeling how that amazing. kind of works amazing i don't know they're all out. The this. Bolshoi, they're resonant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we, yeah, and I thought he was so, the other thing that I thought was funny with Ilya is again, he is so Russian that he is not lying. And this is, Paulina Edmonds had this too, where the parents are like so Russian where they just are more honest, right? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I really wanted to be at the world with Vincent, but Cam did it okay. But, or he said Camden did pretty well. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was like to be like, I really wanted to go with this person. Yeah, exactly. And the other one was along for the ride, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like, amazing. Oh my God. Keep, <laughs> Keep speaking. Like, yeah, they, exactly. It was like, clear that he's a Vincent fan. Yeah. Because he was bringing him up all through the. I didn't realize it was Vincent that sort of broke the news to Ilya that he was not in the. Um, Olympic selection. You let them know in an awkward way. Like, you just like don't get the text message. It's like they ghost you and you don't make the Olympic Yeah, team. kind of, right? I mean, it's like, are they sending everyone else a thing that says you're not invited either? But you would think that yeah. a so, special case could have been made. But Yeah. Um, the other thing, there was one other thing that I was going to say about, uh, anyway, yeah, with the Vincent and anyway, yeah, they don't, they do not text you when you don't make the Olympic team. So yeah. very awkward, very yeah. awkward. Yeah. Uh, oh, on Twitter, people were making a big deal that he wanted to land the quad axle before Yuzuru Hanyu. I didn't find that to be- No, um, of course not. I love, I love the ideology <laughs> that they're gonna sit back and be submissive and not have goals and, and desires to, to sort of achieve great things in their sport. Of course you would want to be the first to land it. Of any, course you want to be in the any, history books. Anyone is going to be inspired by someone else. And yes. To do it yeah. I guess he kind of acted like Yuzu's wasn't rotated, but if you have eyes, it wasn't fully rotated. It wasn't. Yet. Yeah, that's exactly. That, right? And again, I mean, Hanyu doesn't, it's never Hanyu that's having the problem. <laughs> But Nathan also tried a quad axle that wasn't completely around. And right. they both put, in my opinion, they both pushed the sport forward technically, even trying right. it in public. Right. Because exactly. after them. That's how that's how this works, right? right. You go from right. one to another. Of course you're gonna be inspired. And if you're a competitive person, you're not gonna be like, oh my goodness, John, I am gonna wait to try to do the quad axle for the until, honor. Yeah. Until Yuzu does it first. His old ass is going to do it first, yeah. and then I'll wait and right. maybe never do I'll it. I'll lose either. time. 
I'll yeah. lose time and not go for it. So that some fragile fans can feel okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's very unusual. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are people thinking? <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. I have you a never. Time with Twitter. And they tag yeah. us in everything, but I, I have a I know, and then I'm like, I don't, I'm not a part of this. Yeah, so. It makes me very nervous. I just yeah. like, yeesh, yeesh. Like, the armies can come at any moment. Yeah. Well, speaking of armies coming at any moment, Gosh, you are plus five transitioning all over the place. You are, you. You are 10, you. 10 for transition. Mark Kondratiuk and the Russians are going to be having uh, their own Grand Prix series. It's going to be so different from the Cup of Russia because there are five stages of the Cup of Russia and there will be six of the alternative universe Grand Prix uh, going on in Russia. A lot of competing. And they're going to invite other countries to it. I wonder, you know, China like is, uh, of course, but yeah. are, you there, are they going to invite China? Like there's this really unspoken thing where China didn't go to worlds and some of this about injuries and coronavirus, but there's never been like a press release statement about right. we, you know, skating China are not going to participate in these competitions because of X, Y, and Z. Right. We really have. Uh, but although that that's that's in line with them, like that tracks, they often just seem to like not send people willy nilly. Yeah. yeah, I've never quite followed. It happened them. in gymnastics once in 2001. They only sent one female and they sent a B team of men. Like they've done different things where they promoted their national games for different reasons over the world championships. And be like, we always do this. You'd be like, actually four years before you didn't, but okay. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> this has different strategies have happened in China. They don't seem to have a really strong pipeline uh, right. currently. Uh, unclear, obviously, uh, geopolitically, they are aligned with Russia. So I, you don't know, would they participate in that series? I think it's interesting for this, I keep looking to the other sports. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. this is not just a skating issue, obviously. So I'm, I'm curious to see it play out um, with other sports, maybe beforehand, because these aren't going to happen and they will happen in conjunction with the Grand Prix. These, I mean, it, it'll, of course, they're going to do it at the same time and probably try to, you know, land more quads that will be um, promoted at the same I'm sure they will try to outdo whatever is happening. That way, if you read Sports Rue, you can say, oh, it's so much better. They spent a lot of time all talking about the world championships and watching the world championships after they all said that they weren't going to watch it. And right. then they talked about how much better it would have been had their skaters been. I mean, just the contradiction. Right. Yeah. You are yeah. following along on Sports Roo. I mean, incredible. Okay. Yeah. And I have a, I've been debating doing it as the blade turns, getting back into it because there's like not an abundance of content, but I wanted to break down kind of the problem in Russian skating with the toxic culture. When uh, Nukamanova speaks right. about how her coach was abusive and, uh, you know, talked about her weight, which happens in any country, as we know, unfortunately. Right. But then they called up, like, I don't know, approximately maybe 12 people in Russian figure skating to be like, well, she really was fat. Right. I mean, <laughs> to confirm it. Yeah. Oh, she was fat. Like Tarasova of all people right. talking uh, about this, right? And then Pisayev saying, well, when I was president, she achieved absolutely nothing. So why do we care what she has to say at all? They, they like to go. And I remember when you had me read that Svetlana Horkina article about yeah. someone, they first go to, do we care about what this person says based on their results? And if they didn't have the results, now we now suddenly their experience has been completely invalidated. And then there was someone else that gave it, well, you got to prove it. But they weren't saying you have to like find out, was this coach really abusive? It right, was like, let's find out what's happening. The onus here. is on her. How right. dare you besmirch this person? I thought that was really telling. Yeah. About, um, because imagine if someone said that they were sexually abused by right. a coach or someone. Right. The same thing would happen. 
right? You was, find here, it's a little bit more on the side of the athlete. Like I find public sentiment is very much like, how could you have done that to a child as opposed to there, they really do rally around the institutions. I mean, I'm sure there are examples of it here. I think our society is trying to believe um, the victims more, at least publicly, but mm. then you will always hear after the fact, people rationalizing or discussing things privately that maybe they wouldn't say publicly. Got it. But I think that the needle is at least moving. moving. Yeah. And you could see there, if in public, you could just completely be like, well, that person had no results. What do we care? How right. are they going to believe someone? Right. right. That, and I think that there's a, a difference there. And yeah, but it's it's startling to kind of read those. Very much so. Yeah. And you sense, I mean, she was always a beautiful skater, I thought. She yeah. always had tremendous quality, but yet something was, there was a disconnect in maybe the results compared to the talent. And who's to say that wasn't abuse? That, do you know what I mean? That that could have been the reason for the lack of results that they were so desperately looking for from her. And then there is the argument, which is not a right argument, or wrong, but the government is paying you to be an athlete. You have to be in shape or they and what their definition of shape is otherwise they're not well that shape. and isn't that the question is how can one define that with all these different body types and all this sort of stuff like uh, of course yeah but you can just see how there's no right system there's no system that's like um insulate that like would protect someone in an insular way from these kinds of problems right? right either you're paying and your family is providing this pressure and coaches or the government is or you know wherever it's coming yeah i mean the idea the ideology there being that your body is the product mm -hmm. and and i in any venue that's yeah. gross <laughs> I, I, I don't know how anyone can have a positive mental health situation in that sort of scenario yes. yeah yeah well there was a psychologist today that said you know when puberty is the enemy there are going to be problems and i thought well at least someone is just being saying it like, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, I think there are other problems along with that, but yeah. We did hear that Gorshkov will be uh, the head of the Russian Federation for again for the next four years. So there was a big celebration on Sports Roo about that. But <laughs> I, we're in this weird period where things are shifting. The whether Russia will participate in the ISU Congress is still unclear. Uh, right. They will be sending people to Thailand. Uh, there's also been chatter in gymnastics. They might cave and let Russian athletes compete as individuals. It does not appear that that will take place in the ISU. Um, it does not. Appear. As individuals, do you sort of mean like how they were doing the name change at the Olympics? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. I don't know if the FIG will go through with that. I mean, okay. if tennis isn't allowing the Russians to participate and they're really more individuals than they are in a sport like figure skating or gymnastics. Okay. I would, Im uh, I imagine tennis is more popular, has way more money. <laughs> Other federations are probably going to follow that. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate to say, but certain sports have more cl clout and, yeah. uh, than others. And uh, well, and some are less entangled Yeah, with the political scene. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to think about it. Arena Wiener is randomly getting divorced in the middle of all of this stuff when sanctions are going on. She's so tied in with gymnastics. Right. Is she getting, is this a protection of assets? Or did they have marital strife that came through over the sanctions taking place? Like what, just interesting timing going on. Sorry to like jump, jump back for a second. <laughs> jump, which was actually not an intentional pun, but aren't they doing a jumping competition also? I was unclear if this is part yes. of their like answer to the Grand Prix or they're going to insert that as part of their cup. I wasn't they quite following. They're, they're planning on having a jump competition. It's unclear if it's going to be at every competition or if it's- Got gonna, it. Okay. Which are, they are going to make sure that they are generating attention one way right. or another. Because right. they're- Come on, you have to think that the Russian Federation is going to try to say, what a joke not to have us in these competitions. Yeah. You know, I have to say that I do worry about, I, I think that by the end of the season, it could be a good season. 
I think I really worry that the fall is going to be really rough. And I actually wonder if anyone will watch or be uh, interested. Because if you think about it, the Russians push their skaters to the top. Dr. Shevetsky, all their judges, <laughs> the way they train the skaters, right? And the marks that they were given. And they, in one sense, everyone in the ISU over time basically just ceded to Russia. That way, when Kaori Sakamoto won a bronze medal at the Olympics, she was weeping as though she won the gold. Exactly, because that was like the okay. get. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Also, when we judged um, the, the competition, people had Kauri first, if they're judging the components accurately hmm. and the way GOE should be awarded and not just on reputation. If you go by the actual skating, um, people have, you know, differences of opinions, you know, and there were a lot of people that, you know, how good are Anna Sherbakova's skating skills really, right? right. Are they that much better than Trusipas? Uh, people have opinions on that. So anyway, but yes, you have Cowrie who won the world, but if you're getting rid of all of the people that have won all of the medals for the last year, it's like there's a vacuum of stars that right. just like, on one hand, you could act like Russia was the villain of skating for many, many years. And many people felt that, right? In non-Russian countries. But imagine Harry Potter if Voldemort was just gone mm. after book four. Well, how do you have book five, six, and seven? What's it about? Right. 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 It's gonna take a moment to reshift or figure yeah. out right where that goes. I imagine this fall could be like in the ladies, really. But see, that's fierce. that's where I see opportunity because yes, I think we so. also like an underdog story, and I think we like the idea of course correction. And there are a couple of there are a couple of people that might be able to do this. But again, they're almost in an opportunity now where it's actually available to them. And I would imagine some people will inevitably flounder at the opportunity. I think yeah. now that they can win these Grand Prix, now that they can medal at the Worlds and they're poised to do so, I would imagine some will implode and some will rise to the occasion. Well, and so- You can walk about Worlds, right? It's yes, a hundred percent. That's a, the perfect example. Yeah, I think they have a really strong possibility. Someone like Yilin Kim could have a really big possibility, right? I uh, look to Korea and Japan in this yeah. coming. In this coming, I was just thinking, okay, let's say Brady Tunnell, she's supposed to be coming back. Let's say she gets a bronze medal at a Grand Prix. Obviously, NBC and Tom Z are going to be telling you this is an amazing comeback. A U.S. woman hasn't won a world, you know, hasn't won a Grand Prix medal in X number of years. This is fantastic, right? But then other people are going to be like, well, she won a medal because no one's there. Yeah. Right? You're always going to have that. And both things could be true. Yeah. Um, and I think the same thing could happen with Isabeau, with Lindsay, with right. whoever, right? right? I think the results are going to be a little bit circumspect in the fall before stars start emerging. I do think that there will inevitably be stars who emerge, who perform well and rise to the top. Right. But I think it will take months for that to kind of happen. The men seem more yeah. prime because only like Mark Kondratiuk and Kolyadov. Yeah, it wasn't a real factor necessarily at the top. Nathan for, Vincent, we're going to, you know, step aside anyway. We don't know right. what Yuhani will do. Do you think he'll continue? Do you think he... Well, it was interesting. We, so we watched those Fantasy on Ice clips and he does seem like he could. <laughs> what was that, Dave? I was not understanding at all. He picked up the snow and then like drizzled it on his face like it was like a water feature. I don't want to say that that singer was good or bad. It just was not my taste, okay? That's a great way to say that. You know, I don't know that it was my taste either. Um, but I don't listen to that kind of music, right? right. So I'm just not... Yeah. Not and in me, and guys. maybe when okay. I think of Hanyu at his finest, I just happen to like Hanyu the most in things like Chopin and stuff like yeah. that. To me, the hoodie with the water was not, but the jumps looked fantastic. Yeah, the and I don't know if this, there. Yeah. I don't know if this is like having watching Yuri and Ice, where they made the Grand Prix 
a bigger deal than Worlds, but Yuzu I, always dominated the Grand Prix. Right. I could see him doing a Grand Prix series and not doing Worlds, although Worlds are in Japan. Maybe Yuzu would want to do one more season. We don't know yeah. what he wants to do. He obviously looks to still be- Able to do so, yeah, yeah. 100%. And I don't really know who his big competition would be at the moment. And does like that inspire him? him? Uh, yeah, a domestic competition. Well, that's interesting too. Um, obviously Shoma is continuing. Uh, Yuma. Right. And um, Kazuki Tomono seems to be rising. Uh, just got a program to Deflator Mouse. I think that could be, it could go either way. It could be another deflator mouse program, or it could be kind of charming and whimsical and yeah. interesting to see a man perform deflator mouse. So, yeah. I, I think that. it could work. It could work. Yeah. I don't know, I loved that La La Land program so much that I'm not ready to say goodbye to it, but I want right. to see something new. Right. Deflator mouse wasn't what I thought next. I don't know what I thought next, but maybe this would be interesting in a... And again, I'm telling you like, no one does classical music anymore. Yeah. Not one, even though we all are like, oh, not doing the traditional classical war horses. I was like, but no one is doing them. So actually he becomes more unique, I think, by taking that that choice, so. I think it's a great position. And it's joyous. You know, that who means... else is, you know who else is doing classical? Hmm. Corey Cercelli. Oh, who's okay. Who's followed us, right? Yes, and he's always had it? good music. Yeah. You know who he's dating to? Pagliacci. Uh, amazing. <laughs> then he made some like big bullshit narrative. It sounded like Tracy Wilson bullshit all over it. But he went so Canadian. He has idolized Holler. Oh, and, um, okay. You know, he's one of the first people to look at our Instagram story as soon as it's on. It's like- I love that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. I was like, mm -hmm. we see you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we see you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> we see you and this whole like Tyler Cranston narrative. What did Tyler escape to the other year, Story? You would like to- Right, know. right, That's right. Which art pieces do you own of Tom? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost tried to buy a Christmas ornament of his. It was kind of funny. He should die on the ice, obviously, if he's doing Pagliacci. Not that he wants to die, he just doesn't yeah, want to- Yeah, I was like, not obviously, because remember, yeah. Could send a mixed message. He doesn't want to live, okay. Yeah, okay. After he murdered his wife, yeah. <laughs> For sleeping with the baritone. Oh, whoops. I yeah. read that he was doing. Because there's a lot of shifting in Canada. You know, Conrad Orzel's with Ravi. Joseph Fan, I heard, was with Lee. So there's a lot of shifting going on. Right. Like, Who's going to be at the Cricket Club? We did see that Kazuki, Tomono, and Hannah Harrell were visiting with Mishu uh, this last week. So I, I, I would just be curious who winds up there. Who lands, the yeah. 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 They're all of a sudden have a, they're missing talent there that could pop in at any moment. So yeah, I, I don't know. Um, we I, also, have you been following the Coaster Naya of it all? <laughs> On like, is no. this, okay. Well, I read the I read the last interview. I mean, I read the explosive interview that we talked yes. about, where where she was very forthcoming about the toxicity at Sambo Seventy, but not not beyond that. The situation surrounding her in the Russian press and at Instagram, which she appears to play into, and like, right. good for you. It reminds me of like the days of Perez Hilton and Lindsay Lohan and <laughs> Paris and all the ones that were like getting photographed by the paparazzi and then would get dressed up in with designer outfits by Rachel Zoe to then get photographed by the paparazzi again. And then yeah. complain about the paparazzi following them. Like, right. It just seems like there's like a little bit of a game going on. Okay. <laughs> She's constantly on probation everywhere. But then okay. just, I have Amazing. two new programs. So you tell me what kind of probation I'm on. Right. Which point. Then she appeared to have like a red wig or red. Yes, I saw this thing. photo. It was very peculiar. It was like she was dressing up as Trusova for Halloween or something like that. Yes, although it didn't look like her real hair, right? No, because but... it, it wasn't it promoting a wig company. It was called like Hollywigs, or it was, it was like something. I don't know. There were a million and one articles that were like about what's going on with her hair. Apparently, no one does the auto translate button on Instagram. Then she like posted a picture of her real hair three days later, kind of like gotcha with everyone. But they were like they had a sports psychologist talking about how often she changes her appearance. I was like. Just craziness, okay? Like this, 
you know what? Good for you. Okay. This is you strike him while it's hot. Yeah. She has re remained in her name is still at the top of the list for a lot of people. Her YouTube channel. She was becoming a blogger that right. Maybe not the most disciplined. I don't know. It takes work, girl. I that guess. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but just interesting. Um, yeah. Now, how about this? Our Spanish dance teams, we have been so on this bandwagon for the last years. Jonathan, I'm I know. I know. And they finally achieved the thing. Like they can both go hmm. and then we lose them. Okay. So Olivia Smart and Adria Diaz split he's retiring right she wants to continue the way it was worded she'll have a special position in the spanish federation don't know what that means other than looking for a partner maybe she's the best is, what, is she american citizen first or she's canadian british. she's british okay i couldn't remember okay she's very spanish okay she knows how to say gracias <laughs> amazing, like, amazing. Amo. like yeah, exactly right. it happened in as much as sarah's partner was spanish so yes yeah so sarah and Kareel also have retired but it seems like they're going to do shows together okay and olivia can get him to continue i mean that would yeah be like adria doesn't even want to do tours or anything then he's just kind of gonna walk away well, I don't know. Well, how can he do tours if his partner wants to compete and train with right. other people? Right. Although if she can't get a partner, maybe they will do shows together. For the okay. income, I would think, yeah. I don't know how many Spanish dance teams are going to be making money in shows, right? Like right. if Javier Fernandez invites you to a show, you might only need one Spanish dance team and maybe he would just ask Cortada. I mean, that's right. just kind of the way this works, but yeah. unless you have the big titles. Uh, I, you know, Madison Hubble had said that she wanted to open up a school with Adria. So maybe he'll be coaching. Got it. Performing. Okay. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I, don't, I hope she finds a partner. She was like literally just coming into her own. I know. And they were getting such momentum. Like you knew if they had come the next season, like to the Grand Prix series, like it was there for them. Like, yeah. But again, we said the same about Hubble and Donahue, like now more than ever seemingly would be the time to do it but if i guess if you just sure. don't want to yeah you shouldn't yeah because it's it's going to show up in on the ice i, I think it's going to be a, a season of big opportunity hope the best thing that could happen is that marie france comes up with some just fabulous ideas for next year yeah with, like, for that better. middle tier, like she did this year what Love I mean, with the Zorro program, she oh. took she took like the middle group and she really was like, how do we make this middle group surge forward? Love Marie France the most, you know, big, big fan. <laughs> this year was not my favorite in the material for the top teams. See, I did like the French free dance. I did. I, I liked did. the I French know we were different. dance more. By the end, I got into the French free dance in their moment when they won, but it wasn't okay. my favorite of their material. I okay. Only, I'm not even talking about that. The, uh, 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 like the Hubble and Donahue was not my favorite. Okay. Not my least favorite, not my favorite. Okay. The Chalk and Bates alien uh, astronaut romance story, also not my favorite. But it achieved a lot of press and a lot of like cult following that program. I would like to see them come out with a, like a snake charmer type program. Like we need some interest to get this But see to me, going. that's what I think they thought they were doing. I see how they thought they might have it with the alien astronaut situation. Sometimes you take a risk and it's just. Yeah, that's not... art. <laughs> you ever buy an outfit and you're like, you know, this shirt and you're like, yes, it's gonna be so good. And then it's not. And it's after you're wearing it and you've committed to it then. And you're like, well, I guess I just have to go with this. Yeah. I bought this one. Oh my God, I forget that. It's Michael Kors. I got this shirt. Everyone loved it. It was like this, like, uh, I think I wore it here a couple of times. It was like uh, black and gray camo print, like this sweater. Well, oh, yes, this, I do remember that. Yeah. This navy blue one that had white polka dots on it. 
that like from afar looked really cool. And I was like thinking about it after I left the store and I wound up like doing my due diligence online to buy it, right? It was like, it'll look really unique and cool. I wore it one day to work. The comments. <laughs> it was not landing. <laughs> retired immediately. Okay. 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 Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> my, I remember my boss at the time was like, no, no. Okay, just. No. But again, you've committed for the day. I committed for the day. Okay. And then all day you're like, oh God, yeah. I didn't commit for the season. Okay, I didn't then wear it again. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Unlike some of these Marie Franz dance teams, when it doesn't work, I got rid of it. <laughs> okay. Immediately. Okay, you bailed. Okay. Goodwill, okay. honey. Okay, I will let someone else. So funny. Maybe it wound up in the women's section. I don't know. It just was not <laughs> it. Okay. I can own it, all right? It was a total mess. It was a yeah, you just, but now you know. Mm -hmm. And it was a learning curve for the next sweater that you bought. That yeah. decision was weighing on you. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. You know, it's all right. I mean, I think Chalk and Bates, of course, coming into next season, stand to win the whole lot. Of course. Yeah, I don't see anyone remotely in their way. They need to be healthy. So, yeah. But what's going on with Diana Davis? Is she going to be representing the US? Is she going to, like, that is the big question. I think we've established that she's a, a few spots away from challenging them. I, I mean, and maybe the Italians or something. But yeah, I can't imagine the US was eager to jump at it. And I can't imagine Russia was ready to release her. Look, does unless Russia there was some wheeling and dealing on Ateri's part. With the Russian Federation. I think that's got a big it. ask. Got it. Was there wheeling and dealing on Ateri's part? Have yeah, you but, ever seen the judging of her skaters over the last six, Yeah, but see, that helps Russia. Like, I'm intrigued, like, would Russia play games with her to get her is. daughter somewhere else? And Terry's wheeling and dealing. There are people that say that she just has magnetic energy when she en enters a room. Like how people describe Bill Clinton, right? Like, people, okay. you're just drawn. There's just something about it, right? Okay. You can't explain it. Okay. When you watch a Terry in that ice show from the early 90s, <laughs> How did she get a featured role? There are so many better skaters from left, right, and center. Those back swizzles in the Rhapsody in Blue, it's not just the tango number. Right. Terry in the Rhapsody in Blue, how was she so- featured? Where did you find that? Okay. So the tango number has been, I found right. that. Right. Um, we had seen that. Yeah, I knew that. I found that one. Um, Cause you know, if you knew a Terry's history, she, was in the ice show back in the right. day and she was in Tarasova's show. And this is this is this Mikhail Belusov. But we've seen the tango number, but this is like, I noticed that on the YouTube channel, there were other performances. And if you think like, well, the tango can't be the whole show. Right. That was like what they do for the rest of it. So I just like went in the videos until I spotted like a really tall, <laughs> stiff type I stand scared. That is commitment. That is commitment, Dave. Good for you. I think I've shown I'm committed. Okay. <laughs> when Jenny and I started, there were snarky people on FS Universe and someone's like, well, we'll see how long they last. <laughs> and that was like 15 years ago. We're still here. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Amazing. I had stopped my blog one summer. Okay. okay. And people were like, well, see how long they last. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, this was quite a moment. And you know what's so funny is you see it. You're like, yeah, that's what she does in those like choreography videos. It is still the same vocabulary of movement. How did she get featured? She was the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> and the best one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't. She's I can't. All right. Where did you post it? I can't remember. Is it on Instagram? Instagram. Yeah, sure. it's worth a look. It's worth a look. Mm -hmm. Pause the video. Go look at it. Come back. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. Wasn't it good? Yeah. <laughs> it just shows you do not have to be the best skater to be a successful coach. Right? Maybe you need to be the bad skater because you need to have the wound. You need to have the wound to drive you forward, John. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work Look hard. Look at what second place did to Marie France. Look at what it did to Brian Orser.
Look at what not being from the skating club of Boston and being from the skating club of Worcester. Did to Frank Carroll. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Look at what uh, having an injured shoulder did to Tarasova when she couldn't make it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Beat, getting beat. The protopopovs, they skated till they're 80. The ones who lost to them, Moscovina and Mishin, look what they did. Okay. Exactly they, right. That's exactly right. People, yeah. So. And you know what? You know who's calling bullshit on top skaters just being named coaches? Yelena Vaitsehovskaya had the nerve to do it. Although sometimes she plays the Russian game and she'll act like, you know, she knows how to say enough to play along. Okay. Like, oh, you know, she knows how to do the, the pro-Russia flag waving from time to time. Okay. See you. But when she gets honest, incredible. Okay, she called BS and Aliona Sevchenko being named a uh, head coach of the Netherlands skating. And first she, <laughs> she basically said, well, the Netherlands isn't good anyway. And- uh, Yeah, it's not like they have something that they're looking to enhance. They're looking to build it and build it in a very, just for one Olympic cycle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then she also was saying that, you know, maybe this would be a good thing about if she held seminars, but being a coach, like with all due respect, she's not a coach yet. And I thought, well, she has a point. And as Elena likes to remind us, she's an Olympic champion. So she's not just speaking out of her ass. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. But like, I thought about that. Like, it's clear. I've always been intrigued. I feel like I personally on the outside never got the full story of what was happening with um, Alexa and Aliona, what that training situation must have been like. But I think Can there you is- it? I love to imagine it. I know, but it could go so many ways. That's what's so fascinating. Um, but Josh, I think the only appropriate way, remember when they were like posting all those pictures, like jumping together at the camp and they were acting like best friends? That was the indicator. It's like when a couple starts posting too much about each other together. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I, I think- like a renewal probably, of the vows and the real housewives. That's right, okay. <laughs> Same idea. Well, I think she probably has something to offer. But again, if you were going to build a program in a country that really does not have much right now, I think you would need certainly more than four years. You would need to like have like two Olympics away, maybe three Olympics away be when your program would be thriving. These, I don't know how she could do anything. But imagine like if you, were, if you were asked to give your opinion on sports, Rue, and you could just be like completely Russian and like not give an F and say what you think, right? <laughs> Unless it's about like whether or not Russia will win, and then you have to make sure to be like, we're the best, right? But if it's about another person. <laughs> People think we do that here, but really I think it's quite restrained. It's quite restrained. Yeah. Patreon. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's so when, right. no, when I did the Olympic Patreon, I was like, this is liberating. <laughs> like, this is nice. <laughs> you know what I think about Aliona taking over for the Netherlands? Well, it couldn't be worse. You know, <laughs> she's not going to get worse results than they were going to have. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. And they were comparing it, though, to was it biathlon? Tri triathlon. Triathlon yeah. athletes in China. They had sent another yeah, well, sort of famous yeah. Olympian there to do the same in a, the same a very brief amount of time. I did think it was interesting that there was some real politics going on at the PSA conference. We have Benoit, who's been in the U.S. trying to find what rink he's going to be at, and he has been more and more, he was demonstrating at the PSA. But Marie France doesn't even go to US Nationals. I mean, the whole freaking team went to the PSA. Maybe there was, I don't know if there was an award or what, but they were all oh. there. Okay. They were all there. All of the I am, it could have been called I am here. I am. <laughs> they were, the, yeah, okay. You know what? <laughs> they don't have top Canadian teams right now. Right. But Marie France has never been more American. I'm sure she's grilling for Memorial Day right now, Jonathan, okay? I think Marie Franz is- Got a having, sparkler. <laughs> got a sparkler and a barbecue. Amazing. And like a Christy Yamaguchi, I am a Yankee Doodle Dandy, like exhibition ready to go. She is wrapped in her American flag like Tanya Harding and that picture you- Yes, with know. Nancy and uh, Christy. Oh my God, I love that photo. I've never okay. seen someone more American than Marie France, okay? That's right. <laughs> Duplicate. A PSA conference, all right? She was looking very American. This is okay. I was like, okay. that is some skating politics for you. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? To like relocate or just cozy up? Cozy up. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. like, I wouldn't imagine she would ever leave Montreal. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Wait, wait, listen, you got to know what federation is going to support you, where your bread is buttered. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Canada's not helping them this year. They're and maybe venture into more more singles disciplines for some stuff. I want. Well, I hope that they don't. I mean, yeah. listen, it never worked well when Marina did it. Okay, that was. <laughs> Actually, now that you mention it, that's a little bit true. That's a little bit true. Although I thought that's where they might send Ilya. Please do not do this. <laughs> okay. Crazy. Do you remember when Gracie Gold went to Marina? <laughs> do you remember like Nathan Chen went to Marina with Patrick Chan briefly in the fall right. of 2016? They oh, tried. Man. I mean, on paper, it seemed intriguing, but yeah. Really did. Really did. Mm -hmm. We still fucking said. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, uh, also, we did hear that Daisuke Takahashi will be doing one more season this year. Oh, I didn't hear that. That's lovely news. Yes. Uh, Kana and Daisuke will be doing one more year. Mariah Bell has given a maybe. I am not on board with this yet, and I'm going to tell you why. Mariah Bell has been sporting some black laces in her skates. And until- what was that? I yeah, I don't know that we what, talked about that at World. Until yeah. we understand what's going on with Mariah Bell's skate laces, I'm not on board with this. I don't know what is happening, but my inner Frank Carroll is saying like, no. All right? But was it supposed to look like corsity or something? It didn't match the, the vibe or the, I, I didn't know what happened. I don't know. I have a Tanya moment backstage. It's uncalled for. I don't know. It hasn't been changed. I feel like she has had ample opportunities to get white laces and we haven't seen it. Okay. okay. They have, there are skate shops at every uh, city of the stars. Amazon. 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 Yeah. Amazon. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. This is going to be such a, a weird season. I, yeah. I'm, and I think like, a maybe at this point, like it's kind of late to be a maybe, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Like, what's going on with Alexa? Like, are we going to see no. Alexa? No. Ashley Kane was posting. Looks like she's looking for a partner. We know that Vanessa and Eric are continuing. The Japanese pair team, they're continuing. I didn't know Vanessa and Eric were continuing. Okay. We, have a, like, we don't have any pair teams in the U.S. that are yeah. any. Yeah. Listen, Alexa can command top dollar. Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm seeing it. I'm noticing on Instagram that there's been like a real um, improvement in her level of fashion, maybe in, in disposable income since Chris started coaching every pair team on Planet Amazing. Earth. Amazing, yeah, okay. So listen, Alexa, you can put off having kids for one year. Let the USFS pay you. Yeah, to do the thing, do it and again. Money. Yeah. Grant free prize money. Yeah. The one out there. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, Paris is, uh, Paris is a pretty empty field coming up. Think of the runways you could rent with that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With four looks each time, yeah. <laughs> right. okay. Like, I don't know. Like, uh, just, we need this to happen, okay? We need Alexa. To get, there needs to be some sort of personality. Also, in the one of the strangest matchups, Zach Daleman is skating with Natalia Zabiaco. Now this is possible because she's actually Estonian. Now, and is able to travel from being Estonian. Zach Daleman, random partner, but her actual coach under Elton John, like her actual coach, Vlad, worked with Bruno in ISU seminars. So hmm. Paul Bruno said that he had a partner available and they're trying to see if logistically this can work. Listen, we're gonna see some weird shit with this. <laughs> <laughs> Skate America's at the Skating Club of Boston. Russia's not competing. Right. There's no cup of Russia. There's no cup of China with a left. have an Estonian Canadian pair. Yeah. You know what? Could be interesting. Buckle up. Yeah, okay. and I mean, for that reason, I think it could be very interesting. Listen, Lindsay Thorngren got a program from Benoit that started with a car crash. Oh, I was weird, like, not again. Weird oh, vocals okay. about, I want to be like the others. And her coach decided, let's use Benoit again. <laughs> Two programs. 
choices. Yeah. Choices. Okay. Choices. It's going to be that kind of a season. All right. Yeah. Just buckle up. Buckle up. Get ready. Yeah. <laughs> Just know it's about to get. It's going to be great. We're going to have all of these ISU rules coming out. Uh, the congressional elections. Right. The, yeah. That, the there Prix. will be big news from Thailand soon. Yeah. There will be big news coming. Any yeah. which way. I can't wait. <laughs> Hold it, it looks sexy.